Welcome to the Mosomic Memes Microphone Guide. My name is Mikko Suvanto. In this episode I'll talk about the implementation of Memes microphones into devices and the goals that device manufacturers and designers have for those implementations. Implementation means how the microphone is designed to be a part of the device electrically, mechanically and acoustically. Mechanical and acoustical implementation are kind of the same thing, but still significantly different. Mechanical implementation is about providing a stable and reliable mechanical environment for the microphone. Acoustical implementation addresses the acoustical factors, such as acoustical dimensions. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. The most important goals for MEMS microphone acoustical, mechanical and electrical implementations are performance, reliability, cost and size. I listed performance first because it's the most exciting one. This doesn't mean that it's the most important one of the four goals. Let's get started with the details. The first item on my list is great sound capturing performance. Depending on the system, this can mean different things. High sound quality as perceived by people, high speech intelligibility, high speech recognition system performance, high algorithm performance to enable, for example, good noise reduction, and so on. In most cases, regardless of whether the signal will be received by human ears or an algorithm, the goal is to maintain high fidelity between the incoming sound and the captured audio signal. In technical terms, this means having, first of all, a high SNR, signal-to-noise ratio. The longer the distance to the captured sound source is, or the softer the sound source is, the more important it is that the self-noise of the microphone and its implementation are low. The microphone system should also have a flat frequency response. A flat frequency response means that none of the captured sound frequencies are boosted or attenuated in relation to the other frequencies. A non-flat frequency response would mean that the output signal does not correctly represent the input sound. This can cause bad perceived sound quality or confused algorithms. The severity of the problem depends on how big the differences between different frequencies are and at what frequencies the sensitivities differ the most. A non-flat frequency response can also easily lead to poor phase behavior of the microphone system. This can deteriorate the performance of multi-microphone systems. High signal fidelity and linearity also means having low signal distortion, THD. Distortion means that there is content in the output signal of the microphone that is not there in the input signal. How bad this sounds, or how much it disturbs algorithms, depends on the amount and nature of the distortion. Disturbances, such as RF interference, should be minimized in the signal. The same goes for signal artifacts. Some requirements, such as those for frequency response, may differ depending on the use case and the application. For example, Signal quality preferences can be different for human listeners as compared to DSP algorithm systems. The signal quality of a microphone system is naturally affected by the choice of microphone. For example, its performance level and electrical robustness play roles. Also the interface type, analog or digital, makes a difference. The preference between the two interface types depends on the application, for example, laptops use digital microphones practically exclusively due to the challenging electromagnetic environment and long signal traces. Also, the acoustical, mechanical and electrical implementation of a microphone into a device can have a very big impact on the capturing performance and reliability of the microphone system. Nowadays, a key part of achieving a high signal quality or high system performance is using signal processing systems such as noise cancellation, echo cancellation, 
directional systems, as well as speech recognition algorithms. For example, the sound captured by the microphones can be enhanced by cancelling unwanted content with noise and echo cancellation systems. The unwanted content can be, for example, ambient noise, or content the device itself outputs through its speakers. All signal processing systems are likely to work better if the signal quality they receive from the microphones is high. Great sound capturing performance also requires that the performances and functionalities of the microphones are constant. This means minimized variation from one microphone to another, as well as from one device to another. The next key goal for microphone systems is reliability. Talking about reliability isn't as exciting as talking about performance, but it's important to understand that even the highest performance numbers and flashiest microphone capabilities don't mean much if the microphone or some other part of the system does not work reliably. Microphone reliability can mean a lot of things. Avoidance of malfunctioning devices at the hands of the customers who buy and use them. Consistency of performance, in other words, avoidance of reduced capturing quality or fluctuating functionality. This goes for both perceived sound quality as well as speech user interface performance. It also means reliability of microphones in production. The goal is a low production failure rate, in other words, high yield. Another aspect of reliability is ease of reliable system integration. A microphone should be easy to design to be a reliable part of a system, both mechanically and electrically. One can look at microphone reliability from a few different aspects. Mechanical robustness describes the ability of the microphone to tolerate mechanical abuse. Environmental robustness tells us how robust a microphone is against factors such as heat, moisture and so on. Electrical robustness describes how reliably a microphone performs well in different operating environments and when subjected to disturbances. Reliability requirements can vary significantly depending on the device type, applications, as well as the conditions and the way the device is meant to be used. The next important implementation goal is low cost. Minimizing cost is the goal in practically all systems, at least in the realm of consumer electronics. The definition of low cost depends on the device, the manufacturer, and the overall goals for the device and capturing quality. Within the given boundary conditions, a manufacturer of mass-produced devices will always want to minimize their costs and the price they pay for a microphone. It's only a matter of how cost minimization is stacked against requirements for high sound quality. A key thing to understand is that for a device manufacturer, low cost, high quality and high reliability go hand in hand. The result of pretty much any quality or reliability issue is that time and money are spent. This is naturally not something that a device manufacturer wants to face, so they avoid problems if they can. The spending caused by reliability issues can take different forms, for example, Man hours spent on troubleshooting the problem, prototyping and design changes to fix the problem, lost device sales due to delayed market entry, reworking cost in device production, scrapping of finished or half-finished goods in device production, increased labor costs to reach needed production volumes despite low production yield, repair or replacement costs of devices that malfunction in the hands of the end customer who bought it warranty reimbursement costs, loss of sales due to consumers' reduced trust in the device brand caused by unreliable devices, and the list goes on and on. Another factor that can affect the profitability of a mass-produced device is the ease of assembly, and that of course includes the microphone and the microphone implementation. The easier and faster the manufacturing can be done without compromising quality and reliability, the better. Here are a few significant factors that make mass production easier and less expensive. 
The whole assembly of the device can be done in the vertical direction. There's no need to use special production methods, tools, equipment or facilities. The assembly can be done automatically, with minimized need for human labor. The likelihood of microphone failure in production is low, meaning that the yield is high. The last microphone implementation goal on my list is small size. In most cases the goal is to minimize the size of the microphone and its implementation. The smaller the device is, or the more microphones there are in the device, the more critical the size of the microphone implementation is. Often, especially in the case of bottom port microphones, this is enabled by the smallest available microphone. The size of the microphone determines how much space the implementation takes on the side of the board that the microphone is mounted on. On the other side of the board, the volume the microphone sound channel and ceiling take don't depend on the microphone. For top port microphones, it's not always that simple. The choice between a top port and bottom port microphone can make a big difference in the size of the implementation of the microphone. The optimal choice of package type depends on the mechanical structure of the device and the location of the microphone in the device. The sizes of MEMS microphones available in the market are pretty much standardized. Microphone manufacturers compete for the same microphone slots in customers' devices, and having the same component sizes available as your competitors allows you to do that easier. Using a microphone type and size that's available from multiple suppliers makes sense also for device manufacturers. This allows them to have multiple suppliers for the components, which helps keep prices reasonable and to reduce the risk of quality problems or supply shortage. Having several suppliers for the same microphone slot in the device requires that also the performance and other characteristics of the microphones match. The goals for the microphone implementation depend also on the quantity of microphones in the system. If there's only one microphone, everything's okay as long as the microphone works as it's supposed to and the sound quality is high enough. You don't have to worry about small changes in the microphone. Things like slightly fluctuating sensitivity or face behavior inconsistency from one microphone to another. With only one microphone, some drift in microphone characteristics is typically not a problem. Things change drastically when there are more microphones in the system. In multi-microphone systems, such as smart speakers and smartphones, it's typically also important that the characteristics of the implemented microphones are similar and that they don't change in relation to each other. The way multi-microphone processing systems work is that they process and compare the multiple signals coming from the microphone array. Any differences or changes in those signals that are not caused by the factors that the system tries to analyze can cause the processing and analysis to fail or at least lose its accuracy. The things that processing systems look for are, for example, the relative levels and phases of the sounds incoming to each microphone. Therefore, the key parameters that should be stable and match from microphone to microphone are, for example, sensitivity, frequency response, and phase characteristics. The differences and changes in the characteristics of the microphones can be caused by many factors. They can be caused by manufacturing variation from microphone to microphone. This may be caused by variation in the microphones coming from one supplier's production line. The properties of the two microphones are likely to be somewhat different if the microphones come from two different manufacturers. Another source of variation from one microphone to another in a device are the electrical, acoustical and mechanical implementations into the device. Differences can also be caused by variation in the environment each microphone operates in. One may be sitting next to a hot component, such as an RF amplifier, while the other one is in a significantly cooler spot in the device. There may also be differences in the electrical and electromagnetic operating environments, even within one device. One microphone may sit next to an antenna, and another further away. The acoustical implementations for each microphone may also be different. 
Differences in frequency responses are often caused by differences in the sound channels of the microphones. The goal should be to make the acoustics for each microphone as identical as possible. The acoustic conditions can also change due to, for example, lint accumulating in the sound channel of one or more microphones. The properties of a microphone may also change over time or due to, for example, environmental factors such as heat or humidity. Differences and changes in the characteristics of microphones in relation to each other may affect the performances and accuracies of systems such as ambient noise cancellation, echo cancellation, directional microphone systems including beam forming, beam steering and source localization, speech recognition, multi-channel recording systems and so on. The result can be, for example, poor cancellation of ambient noise, poor echo cancellation, meaning poor cancellation of the noise produced by the speakers in the device itself, inaccurate directing of the microphone sensitivity towards the wanted direction, inaccurate sound source localization and thereby loss of sensitivity to the wanted sound source, and poor ambient noise cancellation. Poor speech recognition system performance, measured as, for example, word error rate WER or poor signal balance between the channels in a multi-channel recording or a poor stereo sound image in a stereo recording. There's a variety of things that can be done in the implementation of the microphone to achieve the goals I just listed. It's important to make sure that the performance of the microphone component is on the right level. A key thing is to make sure the microphone components are suitable for the device type and compatible with the way they are implemented. The microphones must be acoustically compatible with the implementation and mechanically robust enough. The microphone must also work well together with the electrical system of the device in terms of interface type, signal levels and so on. The electrical robustness of the component, being able to tolerate a hostile electrical and electromagnetic environment must also be suitable for the device. The electrical robustness can be improved significantly with good electrical implementation. Things like well-designed grounding and disturbance filtering play big roles. Good acoustical implementation is a crucial enabler for high microphone system performance. The acoustic porting built for the microphone into the device mechanics must be designed to have as little negative effect as possible on the signal that is passed to the microphone. In a typical device, there are lots of factors that affect the locations and acoustics of microphones. Therefore, the acoustic channeling is often more or less a compromise. It's the job of the acoustic engineer to make sure the compromises are not done in wrong places. Making sure the acoustic channel is well sealed acoustically is also highly important. A sturdy mechanical design of the device, especially around the microphone, helps a microphone cope with everyday things such as handling of the device, bending and hits. The mechanics around the microphones must be stable and offer the microphone enough support. I'll go into a lot more detail about all of this in the following episodes. Okay, that's it for this episode. In episode 14 I'll talk about the acoustical implementation of MEMS microphones into devices. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you liked what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 